Hey everybody, um, we're going to go ahead and do our notes for 9.6, change of dimensions with perimeter and area. The first thing we're going to look at is um, these two figures here. They're both rectangles. One is labeled K, one is labeled S, and then we're going to answer some questions about them. Um, what is the ratio of the sides of K to, um, to S to K? Okay, when you see ratio, this is also... Um, the same thing as scale factor, which in the previous couple lessons we've learned as right to left. That's why it says from S ratio K, S to K. Or you can also, um, you also have heard this as new to old. So it's the second figure over the first figure. So our second figure is S, our first figure is K. Or our right figure is S, our left figure is K. So right to left. So you're going to pick one of the, um, the side lengths for S, either the 9 or the 18. It doesn't matter which one. So let's just pick the 9. And then you would pick the corresponding side length for K, which would be 6. Now if we did the 18, then obviously we would choose the 12 for the K. Um, and then we need to reduce both of these. And you'll see that both of these, when they reduce, are the same fraction. And I'm going to show you how to do this in your calculator. 9 divided by 6. If you press Enter, it will give you a decimal. Then if you press Math, and then Enter, Enter, it will give you the fraction equivalent. We could do the same thing with the 18 over um, 12. 18 divided by 12. Press enter, notice that it's also 1.5, and then press math, enter, enter, and it'll give us the same fraction, 3 halves. So the, um, the ratio or the scale factor from K to S is 3 halves. Okay, what is the ratio of the perimeters from S to K? Okay, well let's find out what the perimeter of K is and S is first off. Okay, remember that there are four sides to a rectangle, not just these two shown. So we have to add up all four sides, 12 plus 12, which is 24, plus 6 plus another 6, that's 12, plus 24 together is 36. And then we're going to find the perimeter of S as well. 18 plus 18 and 9 and 9 is another 18. So 18 plus 18 plus 18, um, that would be a perimeter of 54. So remember we're doing perimeters from S to K. So again, right to left or new over old. So this would be 54 over 36 because you want to write your S first, then your K. So then we're going to go ahead and go to our calculator and reduce that. 54 divided by 36. Up. Again, you should notice that it's 1.5, which we know is the exact same fraction, 3 halves. So you should notice that the scale factor and the ratio of the perimeters are the same, 3 halves and 3 halves. Okay, let's see what happens when we talk about the area. So what is the area of figure K? Well, obviously, area of a rectangle is just length times width. And in this case, the length is 12, the width is 6, or vice versa. And 12 times 6 is 72. So the area of our first figure is 72 centimeters squared. What is the area of figure S? Okay, same thing, length times width. The length is 18, the width is 9. 18 times 9 is 162. Okay, so now we're actually going to compare the ratio of the areas from S to K or from right to left. I'm sorry, yeah, from right to left or new over old, same thing we've been doing. So the area of our right figure, the bigger one, is 162, and the area of the left figure, the smaller one, is 72. So we would do 162 over 72, 
And then we would reduce that and what we're going to see is it the same as the three halves or not the same? Uh, 162 divided by 72. Do I get 1.5? No, I don't. I get 2.25. So if I press math, enter, enter, reduces my fraction to 9 fourths, which you notice is not the same as 3 halves. But you should notice a relationship between 9 fourths and 3 halves. They are not the same. However, if you took the 3 halves and squared it, so if you squared the 3, 3 squared is 9, and 2 squared is 4. So the ratio of the areas is just squared of what the ratio of the perimeters is and of the scale factor. So that brings us to our rule that we're going to fill in right here, these blanks. If two polygons are similar with lengths of corresponding sides and a ratio of A to B, so that would be our scale factor, A to B, Then the ratio of the perimeters is also A to B, because if you notice, if we go back up here, uh, the scale factor was 3 halves, and the ratio of the perimeter was 3 halves. So the, the ratio of the perimeter scale factor will be the same. But the ratio of the areas is different. It's squared. So you would square the A, and you would also square B. Okay, so this is our rule for the changing of dimensions. Okay, so let's apply this to um, example six and example seven. You have a regular hexagon here. All the sides are the same of this, it's three. All the sides are the same here, nine. The scale factor again, remember scale factor is new over old, or you could also do right over, can't write, right over left. So this would be your right figure. This would be your left figure. So your scale factor would be right over left. So 9 over 3. And then, of course, you want to reduce that. 9 over 3 and reduces to 3 over 1. So obviously, the right one is triple what the left one is. OK, ratio of the perimeters. We don't even need to add up the perimeter and find them because we have our rule now ratio of perimeters is the same as a scale factor. They're both A over B, A over B. So our ratio of perimeters here would be 3 over 1. And then the ratio of the areas, again from our rule, would be A squared over B squared. So we're just squaring the 3 over the 1. So it would be 3 squared over 1 squared. Well, 3 squared is 9, and 1 squared is just 1. So the ratio of areas would be 9 over 1. OK, we're going to go ahead and save example number 7 for class. So turn over to the back side. Look at example 8, please. Two similar polygons have sides 6 centimeters and 15 centimeters. Doesn't even matter what the shapes are. We know that their side lengths are 6 and 15. Um, corresponding to each other. The area of the smaller polygon is 68 centimeters squared. Find the area of the larger polygon. Here's the issue though. We don't know the ratio of the areas. We just know the ratio of the side lengths. So right now we just know the scale factor. We don't even know which one's the right one and which one's the left one or which one's the new one and which one's the old one. We just know that one is 6 and one is 15. So the scale factor, like we did in the previous problem, is 6 fifteenths. So let's go ahead and reduce that. They both have, go into 3. 3 goes into them, uh, goes into 6 twice, and 3 goes into 15 five times. So that's the scale factor, 2 fifths. That means the ratio of the perimeters I'm just going to shorten it. Ratio of the perimeter is the same, 2 fifths. But the ratio of the areas, remember, we have to square the numerator and the denominator. So it would be 2 squared and over 5 squared. 2 squared is 4. 5 squared is 25. 
So when we look at the question, we need to know all this information to answer the question. The area of a smaller polygon is 68 centimeters squared. So we're dealing with area. So that means we're no, we know we're going to use this ratio, 4 25ths. Find the area of the larger polygon. So that's telling us that this one is the smaller polygon. So when you have your ratio of the areas, 4 25ths, obviously the 4 is smaller than the 25. So our 68 would correspond with the 4. It would stay on top because these are the two small ones. And then the larger ones go on the bottom. We only know the ratio of the large one is 25, but we don't know what the larger area is. So we just set up a nice proportion, cross multiply. 4 times x is 4x. And 68 times 25, and go to our calculator, is 1,700. So we have 4x equals 70, 1,700, divide by 4, and then we'll have our area of the larger figure. Four hundred and twenty-five. So that's the area of the larger figure. We also want to label that with centimeters squared since it is area. Okay, we're going to save example 9 and example 10 for class tomorrow. Um, so go ahead and look at example 11. John wants to enlarge a quadrilateral. Doesn't matter what kind of quadrilateral. Quadrilateral. If John doubles the length but leaves the width the same, what is the effect on the area of the new figure? Okay, so notice that we're dealing with a quadrilateral, which is a flat surface. Anything that has a flat surface, a square, a triangle, a rectangle, a pentagon, um, all has two dimensions. They're flat. Any flat surface is two dimensional. So we have um, dimension one and dimension two. So what's happening to our two dimensions? The first dimension, the length, is being doubled and our second dimension is not being changed at all. So we would call that being changed by a scale factor of one because the size isn't changing at all. If you want to keep the number the same, you have to multiply it by something, you multiply it by a one, not a zero. So the first dimension we're doubling, the second dimension we're not doing anything, so we're multiplying times one. So what's happening to the effect of the area? 2 times 1 is 2. So that means the area is now being doubled. But what if both of the dimensions were being doubled, not just one of the dimensions? If both of the dimensions were being doubled, this one was being doubled and our second dimension was being doubled, then 2 times 2 equals 4. The area would be uh, being multiplied by a uh, factor of 4 be four times as big. But in the case of this problem, only one of the dimensions being doubled, so the area is only being doubled. But if both dimensions were being doubled, it would be four times as big. Okay, let's go ahead and look at example 12. Same kind of problem. If the height of a triangle, again, triangle is two-dimensional. First dimension, second dimension. If the dimensions, uh, the first one, the height is being tripled, but the width remains the same. Again, to keep it the same, you just multiply by a scale factor of 1. 3 times 1 is the area would be tripled. What if um, we tripled the first dimension, but we quadrupled the second dimension? So if we tripled the first dimension, quadrupled the second dimension, we'd be changing the area 12 times. It'd be 12 times as big. Okay. We're going to do another one of these problems, number 13, in class. So I'll see you guys tomorrow.